I think in all arenas, indoor and outdoor, um, you know, controlling of the environment is important for, you know, not just the human health side of things, but also our equine athletes are um, very susceptible to, you know, small dust particles, to in the Northwest, we've had a few summers of terrible um, smoke um, and just the air quality in general really affects um, you know how the horse's lung works and potential side effects of uh, dust particles or poor air quality like uh, horses have a tendency to bleed from the lung um, equine um, exercise induced pulmonary hemorrhage very very common in the in the racehorse world um, but also common in the rodeo world or the barrel racing horse world and you know, heavy dust particles or um, smoke in an environment, especially an indoor environment, can, um, you know, set them up to potentially bleed when maybe they didn't normally or um, even if they're on treatment for it, it can contribute to that happening. From a surface area point of view, the horse's lung is massive. Um, you know, if you look at the side of a horse, it really takes up about 50% of, um, you know, their their length on their on their side, and um, just really very very delicate and intricate um, environment inside of the horse lung and small size particles, whether it be dust again or, or smoke, I think it's five microns is some sort of cutoff where the, the apparatus within the airways, you know, that's sort of built to filter those things, small enough particle size can get down into those very lower airways of the horse lung and, and cause inflammation, infection, and then bleeding like we, like we talked about. It really can compound, you know, some horses are only ridden in an arena, you know, and they're not ridden out and, and free. And um, we're asking our, our quarter horses anyway, and actually all equine athletes in different breeds and, and different disciplines, we're asking a lot of them, you know, and nothing that they would normally do on their own in a wild or natural setting, you know, they're not gonna go spin circles in the ground and less than 18 seconds in the wild, you know, and, and their environment is not normally dust and dirt, you know, unless they live in, in those areas. Um, so whatever we can do to, you know, control the aerosolized dust that we create by running around in the dust and dirt, what our windy Northwest conditions create. And then again, um, on the footing side of things that um, good, solid, um, equal footing is, is important for a lot of our different um, athletic events that we do with our horses. You know, the more research is done on, um, you know, recurring airway obstruction in horses, inflammatory airway disease in horses, you could sort of liken it to asthma type syndromes in, in people. There, you know, in a severe spectrum, there's even COPD, you know, like, like humans will get. Um, and the more research they do and the more, um, the more diagnostics like scoping the airways of horses and getting diagnostic samples from those lower airways to figure out why are they not performing as well as they had been. Um, where does that cough come from? Do they bleed? You know, a lot of those kinds of things. And there's a lot of research that goes on um, in the university setting um, regarding a lot of that, not just for how many horses have these problems, but how, how can we treat them and how can we manage them? And environmental control, you know, whether that be the type of hay that they eat, um, the type of place that they live, are they in a stall? What's the bedding in the stall? Where do they do their job? You know, is it in a, in a nice watered controlled arena um, or is it just in whatever comes along? Do they live in a stall that's beside 
an indoor arena. And so if that dust is not controlled in the arena type environment, you can imagine how it will be in the stalls that are right beside the arena. Well, I think, again, based on what we're asking these equine athletes to do, um, you know, a lot of very, very athletic maneuvers, whether they be a rope horse or a barrel horse, um, you know, they, a lot of stop and go, a lot of, you know, um, just really getting down and using their hind end and using their front end, you know, even in the cutting horse world, the type of footing that is best for those different disciplines in, in performance horses kind of depends on what you're asking them to do. But if that footing is not, you know, well controlled, if it's too slippery, if it's really hard, um, if it's too deep, you know, a lot of those things do set them up for injury um, because they're, you know, they're, they're bred and, and built to be performance horses, but they're not necessarily designed to do everything that we ask them to do. And so whatever we can do to minimize potential impact from the footing on their legs, you know, the better longevity it, it's going to have. But injuries in, in horses is extremely common and expensive to treat and, you know, can be career ending for some. I think same thing, you know, on the human side, I guess I can't speak to, you know, humans with asthma and, and that sort of thing, but you would assume that, you know, if it's going to affect a horse a certain way, it's probably going to affect that rider a certain way too. And, you know, there are a lot more medicines available on the human side, easier to treat their issues, but, you know, everything from dust in your eye to asthma, you know, again, on the human side, if, if we're affected by it, then you know that the horse is affected by it just based on how their lung is designed and how much air movement is taking place there. When my husband works it. <laughs> when the tractor's done going around. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, there's usually not a lot of lag time there. We'll, we'll water it and then um, and then we'll, you know, work the ground and then you're ready to go from that point. As long as we didn't, you know, create a mess in our watering um, as far as muddy spots or, or that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. We rope too. Well, I don't, but the rest of my family ropes. And so you can imagine having a, you know, something sticking out from the wall. Um, it's prone to get caught by the rope as you go by um, or the rider, you know, if you get close enough to the wall and yeah. I, I know you see yep. I, I think it, it just depends on the discipline and exactly what you need where within that space that you're working. Um, you know, like you said, high traffic or, or different type of footing based on um, what you're doing in that section of the arena, for sure. I think, I mean, I think it's all very important and, um, you know, your concerns are same as our concerns. Um, you know, dust abatement, ground control, and total environment control, you know, or, um, important. We're lucky on this side where we don't have a lot of humidity, you know, and um, that was one of my thoughts or questions, you know, with a watering type system, can you get it too humid? And probably not really in our area of the country, it's going to dry out pretty quick. Um, but you can definitely get it too wet from a footing point of view, but that's all timing. Um, I think for sure from a horse health point of view and you know in that moment it's not directly veterinary care but it becomes that you know when the horse is coughing or has you know obvious respiratory signs or you know it might be something just as simple as a as a decrease in performance when they're performing at this level 
and then they're performing at this level, you know, the question is, is it a respiratory issue or is it, you know, a lameness or a soundness type issue, which both really um, can be addressed or can be managed with, you know, good, um, good footing as well as, as good dust control. There too many, too numerous to count. I mean, there there's everything from suspensory issues to fractures. You know, I mean, that's just a terrible, catastrophic type injury. But footing and and how different horses handle different footing differently. You know, some are just really athletic and very good about gauging. Is it kind of hard or is it is it really deep? And that horse will just naturally sort of perform differently to almost protect itself. Other horses are, you know, just go hard no matter what. And, you know, deep footing or slip footing, it's hard to say one injury. There's not just one thing that happens, but it's usually within that performance that some sort of injury can happen. And it's hard to blame it on the ground, you know, because you just cannot, um, control every situation, but very often it is associated with the conditions of the ground. Gosh, I mean, you're just, you're around horses, accidents happen and, and things can happen and it doesn't matter how well prepared you are, stuff still happens. Um, and same thing, you know, on the footing side of things, it, it could be the best ground, but it you know, you're the fifth person out and it just got a little deep and then that's when a slip happens, you know. I mean, we do in the performance world everything that we can do within reason to control the atmosphere as much as possible, but it, it's still luck of the draw.